Case. This is the computer controlled box joint jig which positions its slat actually by a stepper motor and uh, we get a real good exactness to produce box joints like this. You see even on a very long distance we get a very tight fit without reworking which is actually quite impressing for me. Production of such a box is around 10 minutes or less even once your wood is already there. So, but cutting the joints is actually very fast and reliable with this. So, stay with me and look how this works. So, the whole thing is controlled by a microcontroller here, an Arduino Duo board, uh, together with a touch display. We have a stepper motor driver, the stepper motor is below here, driving this rod. We have the gears from the famous program of Matthias Wandel. This is driving actually a brass spindle and the spindle moves the slat here by a long nut which is below the slat here and we can repeat the movement very exact by the steps. Such a stepper motor has 200 steps per rotation so divided by 2 because of the gearing so 10 and 20 te uh, teeth actually so we have 400 steps per rotation of the spindle and the spindle advances the jig by 1.75 millimeter per rotation so 1.75 divided by 400 is actually each step and so we are able to move this slab by really small advances for example now if i advance it by dot one millimeter this looks like this for the exactness of the jig actually these bushings here are very important So we have the spindle and it's very crucial that this block is very much fixed and that these bushings here really keep it in place and there is no wobbling or any movement in this because otherwise the whole repositioning of the thing does not work as expected. The software has different menus actually, here in the settings menu we can set actually the basics of the jig, so the blade width which we use, how many millimeter per revolution actually the rod advances the jig and this setting is actually the most crucial one in the whole thing because even though the norm says that the rod, uh, the, the spindle should advance by 1.75 millimeter per rotation, that's actually not quite right. What I found that for my special spindle, the advance is only 1.744 millimeter. The difference of 0.006 millimeter first of all sounds very less and for normal applications this is also right but in this case this means that after 100 rotations we have already six millimeter difference so it's very crucial actually not to um, it's very crucial in fact in the beginning once you build up such a jig to measure actually the advance of your spindle very exact because only then the um, results will be really as good as you can expect it from such a jig. So further on you uh, can set how many steps per revolution 
actually your driver has to do and because you might also use uh, different um, stepper motors and uh, if you have a stronger one possibly you don't have a gearing inside or if you have a weaker one you might not use a 1 to 2 gearing but a 1 to 3 gearing or something like this. So further on you can set um, how fast the um, stepper motor shall run. So I set it at the moment to around 2000 steps per second and there is an acceleration and deceleration so that the um, stepper motor starts slowly and does not simply switch to the um, final speed and the same for deceleration. And last but not least you can inverse the direction of the whole thing because maybe if somebody builds it up in a different way then this might be very useful. So further on you can program the whole things. Today we look only at the linear distribution. Here you can set the relevant settings for how uh, the box joint should look like and there is also an individual distribution menu in which you can set totally custom cutting positions. And finally the control menu in which you can operate the whole thing. Currently it is activated and if I want to move it, let's say by 10 mm to the right, I simply press <laughs> So, and then we see here the target position, the current position, the distance to the target and the current speed at which it's traveling. And here down there is a blue mark which shows actually the position of the slab in relation to the cuts it will take as per the program done. So here we see the starting menu of the program and first of all we have now here four pieces of wood and measure the width 56.8 that is fine so we're going to program the jig to a reasonable distribution of the grooves. So we choose the linear distribution, set the length to 56 dot, sorry, dot 9 and enter this. And from an earlier cut we had here a groove width of 7.7. .7. If we see here the visual feedback for the grooves, we see one, two, three, four grooves, which is reasonable. We start with a groove which will have two cuts. The light blue and the darker blue here show each one cut with my blade. The blade effectively cuts 4.3 millimeters, so the light blue is slightly smaller than the dark blue, which is the 4.3 millimeter. So, okay, if we invert the whole thing, our grooves come to here, and we see that this groove width would be 8.7. Okay, 8.7 is probably too much. So we try with 8.1. So then again the cuts are made a little bit different and once I invert it I see that the resulting groove width of the other ones is 8.167. So that is fine with me, 8.1 and the other one, the inverting one was 8.167 that will be okay for me. So this is the plan for the first cut and now we can go back to our control menu and now we have to set our work pieces into the jig to actually do the cuts. 
So okay, the first thing we're going to do is to accommodate uh, to care about the backlash. So we activate this. We uh, set already the um, distance to the side in a proper manner, so around half the way. And now I will put my cutting position just beside of the piece. Go one, one millimeter to the side, one back, and now we are sure that the spindle will drive the jig to the right immediately once it starts turning again. So once we do then all our cuts in that direction, there will be no backlash in the spindle at all. So, okay, now we have to set our four work pieces into the right position. And the first we have to do is to set the cutting depth of the blade. So that it just cuts a little bit deeper than the thickness of our workpiece and this should be fine. So now with this setting I put a scrap piece of wood behind all this and now we have to set everything to the side of the blade and that all line up correctly that should be fine now and finally we have to clamp the whole thing which works quite well like this Now we are ready to cut. Okay, so everything is set. Work pieces are in place again. We are at the position of minus 4.3 and are going to the first cutting position now. to go. Okay, that's it. So, go back in position zero. And we can take out our work pieces and check whether this fits. So, here we are. And Check. So
quite snug fit. And here is our box. No, maybe turn around that piece. So, okay, here we finally have the result. I turned around that one piece, and we see. There is currently no glue inside. I simply pressed it together with my hands. So, really snug fit, no problem at all, and well, reliable and fast method to do this. So, also here, that is all really fine nothing to complain about at least i couldn't do it like that by hand